And hey, welcome back to a busy Monday night of Hannity. Joining me now to debate all of the uh, issues tonight and uh, President Barack Obama. Well, the opposite ends of the political spectrum. Yes, my favorite pair of brothers. Fox News contributor Bob Beckel and his brother Graham, who, by the way, is going to be starring in the upcoming movie Atlas Shrugged, which comes out April 15th, the film that uh, left-wing Hollywood doesn't want you to see. By the way, I mean this sincerely, and it's not because you're Bob's brother. Bob's a friend of mine. One of the best movies I saw extraordinarily well done and I've seen you in other movies I can't believe how great an actor you are this is a phenomenal movie and we're gonna talk about that in days to come thank you very much uh, all right you are the one that obviously got the brains in the family yes okay you're you're as conservative as I am for the most part we may have a few minor disagreements perhaps all right we see that how left-wing your brother is yes all right what happened something must have gone wrong well, whatever it is that went wrong continues to go wrong. He is uh, an adorer of the president, which I find very odd. Mm -hmm. Don't follow leaders, watch parking meters. Uh, he is very, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't, he's got a hole in his head. You know. And it I, needs to be filled with idiots. I know I was going to get beat up by both of you. First of all, he said you were a great actor. He's acting now. I mean, anybody who could act to be like a conservative, and, and, and you, who are too nice a guy to be a conservative, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, would you let Barack Obama alone? He is doing an unbelievable job. He's commander-in-chief. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this. In the first, in the first six months, that's good. He asked for the job. He begged wait, wait for the second. job. The first six months of Iraq, your war, favorite war, I never criticized the president. You've got American uh, military people in harm's way tonight, and you guys sit back here like armchair generals, and you don't know what you're oh, no, talking wait, wait. about. They're not on the ground. Not only that, they're leaving, and he's not in charge of them anymore anyway. He passed on the leadership role, so, you know, it's over. That's what he told that's, us tonight. What's, what's wrong with that? Okay. Well, with, was he successful? Is yeah, Gaddafi he's got to be. Gaddafi he, has he, to go. Was he, it was nine Days. But was he successful, Graham? Well, I, I don't know. He seemed to be apologizing. He seemed very defensive. He seemed to be talking to uh, the people in West L.A. and not to the country. And what was with the great big audience? I don't understand that. Oh, it's the I President of the United States addressing the country, and yet it looked like a campaign rally. And I agree with Bob. I'm not taking a position on this particularly as long as our guys are, are in harm's way. However, they're not on the ground. This, I know that, but we don't. Uh, you know, I you agree can shoot, you can shoot at airplanes, you know. No, no, no. I agree. I but, agree with that part. But here's the point: Should winning matter? If the president says, and I asked this in the last segment, if the president says Gaddafi must go, right? And Gaddafi doesn't go. Well, it, first of all, he flipped on it. Yes, he's got to go. No, he doesn't got to go. Yes, he's got to go. He keeps changing his mind, and he has conflicting messages. But does it matter if the guy doesn't go in the end? Well, first of all, let's make one thing clear. There, by Ed, the most conservative investments, 250,000 people were kept from slaughter because we got in the middle of this thing and stopped Gaddafi's troops from moving in. But the fact of the matter is also the, the community of nations is now united. That blockade is going to absolutely strangle Gaddafi. He will be gone in a month. Don't in lie. a month. How? He'll be gone because he's not going to have any money, because his money's been frozen, because of Obama putting a leadership together. Bob, you don't There's, think that he has a ton of money besides the $31 billion? This is a He may have some nation. of those nurses that he carries around with him, maybe carrying a few bucks for him, but he is not going to be able to survive as the head of that country. Well, well you would agree, Bob, that, that uh, Gaddafi is a colorful creep, right? I think he's off on an acid trip, if you want to know the truth. Well, that's fine. But what happens, though, with the new guys? What if the new guys are worse? Is that possible? Of course it's possible. There's bad, right. bad people. What, what's the point? What is, well, what what is, is your point? point? Well, my point it, is that it's the Middle East, and the president should take a very firm, clear line at this point in our history and do it early and say, this is what we're doing, here's why, period. Well, yes. Not to set up a political event it's and good. go out. I'm Excuse sorry. You're getting, you're, getting, you're getting a little angry here. I'm not uh, angry. I'm yeah, just you, being insistent. You remind insistent. me when you were I'm young, tired, when you were young, I'm tired young of you boy. giving this guy a ride continually. I, it's not a question of giving him a ride. I am tired of you guys trying to decide that this guy is a failure before he has failed anything simply because you don't like him. Now, we, we had a neighbor we didn't like particularly. Uh, if I remember right, we burned his barn down. But that doesn't mean that we're in, on, on top of everything else here that it's not a human being. Barack Obama deserves respect. He's president of the United States. And you guys are not giving him the respect he deserves. I absolutely give him the respect. But as a citizen, I'm the independent conservative voter. I don't understand why he didn't come on immediately when this action was taken I got to a speak question. to the American people. I don't I, get I it. I mentioned this with Dick Morris at the beginning of the show because... He said, 
and I played Biden, but the president said, quote, about President Bush, he doesn't have the power under the Constitution to unilaterally authorize a military attack in a situation that does not involve stopping an actual or imminent threat to this nation. Now, that's what he said when Bush, yeah. excuse me, was engaged in military activity and troops were in harm's way. And you're giving him a pass for going back on his own no, word. No, no, no. That was Biden you're talking about. No, no, no. This was Obama. Okay. If, if if we don't think that the Middle East is in the United States security interest because of the oil that he we're dependent on. He said an actual or imminent and, threat to this nation. And, and, well, it is an actual and imminent threat. How? But beyond that, it's an actual and imminent threat to hundreds of thousands of women forget and that. children. No, that's a different story. Oh, let's forget How that. is this I an see. actual or imminent threat to America? That was the sound uh, of wind blowing through the hole in the middle of a liberal's head. What? That, uh, what uh, you just uh, said. What, a quarter of a million kids? You, go, would, you had like that up your, you on hear your conscience? What he said? A yeah. direct and imminent threat to the United States. Okay. He said that. What was that? Going that into was, Iraq? That's, that's when we put how many thousand, hundred thousand people? What, but he says the president Look, doesn't have the power under the Constitution. That's a very, that. that's a very legitimate question. That is, he may not have the so power wait, under so the Constitution. So he changed his mind? No, it may be. It may, the, the courts are going to have to decide that. But listen, forget the courts. Brothers, he said it. Now he's doing right, exactly brothers, what he said. Brothers, he do. If we could right. please be at peace and just say this: I love both of you. You're both wrong. You are particularly tonight being aggressive to me, and when we were children, I was a lot bigger than you were, and I could handle this, but I can't tonight. You're still a lot bigger than I am. Uh, but, uh, I wasn't it's, being particularly aggressive. Uh, yes, you certainly were. No, no, then you know, I see Biden for time and pray in this segment ends. Th no, I just would like you to apologize to the President of the United States. Well, I have no apology to make. I have great respect for President Obama. Oh, good. It's just on this occasion, I think that you don't want to... Have a something like a dinner Wait, party. If, if humanitarian, if this is the Obama doctrine, right? Where are we going next, Bob? Because you know what? There's a lot of slaughter going on in a lot of countries that I can list them, but I don't have time. And if you remember, Bill Clinton said that one of the, the things he felt most badly about his presidency was he didn't go to Rwanda during the slaughter there. If there is a slaughter of hundreds of thousands of people and we're in a position to stop it, then we ought to stop it. Anywhere that, in the world. Anywhere in the world. So right now, we're good, we ought to be lining up and head, we're headed for all these countries where slaughters are happening. Well, I'm, you're showing Mugabe's another one. Mugabe's gone getting... to Sudan. We're going to head to Bahrain, it, Yemen, the, Lebanon. They're, we're they're head not, to Saudi they're not where are we slaughtering. Going they're, this is an entirely different story between Syria and, and Libya. You're talking about a madman and a quasi-madman and two madmen. Uh, here, uh, listen, you guys, I, I keep getting back to this. This war is just started. You shouldn't be criticizing it. Why it's I'm, going on? I'm just looking at somebody with all due respect as a as a class A hypocrite by saying one thing when another president's in office and does exactly the opposite. Now president. there's something Correct. unique: a president or any politician saying something kind of. No, this one is this one's a hypocrite. I, I see. Uh, and there's not others that are hypocrites. I'm talking about Obama. If you want, he's the president right now. Yes. He's the guy. He begged for the job. We gave him the job, and, and now he, Senator and Obama can, doesn't match. And he the considered Obama. this was both a humanitarian effort on our part. We should do something about it because we were uniquely right. positioned to you do it. You want to make the last word? Yeah. In acting, Bob, there there's three looks at it. You're either you're either playing at the character, you're playing the character, or you are the character. This guy is sort of playing at being president of the United States. You know, that... You gotta go. Oh, excuse me. Gotcha. Did, did you get DickMorrisDick.com in the right. chance? Okay. Let's not. Your, you did it again. What? What was that? With the that, was a, that was it's a little Italian thing. I didn't throw you the finger. Uh, it's about All right. You were staying, Franklin. Atlas Shrugged, April 15th. Yeah. All right. We'll continue our Great American <laughs> Panel next. And tonight on our Great Great American panel, yes, he stays with us. Brother Bob Beckel is here, although he kicked his other brother out. And uh, he's a nationally syndicated radio talk show host on the Salem Radio Network and a partner at the law firm Hewitt uh, Walensky. Hugh Hewitt is here, and she was Miss America 2008. Kirsten Hagelin is back with us. Good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. He got a pretty big, big brother. Beat him up pretty good. It was. What? Yeah, nothing. I, I'm, I, you know what? I want to say one thing at the outset, if I could. I think we all need to calm down here. I want to say Justin Bieber, who who is not not somebody I follow, but is has a new video out called Prayer, and he goes there pray, I think, and he goes down to Haiti and he helps people out and he's very supportive of people in the world. Is he humanitarian? I want to thank Justin Bieber for what he does, and I oh, think you. It. I know, I know. Now I wanted to pass it on to you, and you're a humanitarian. Oh. Hugh's a humanitarian, so everybody leave me alone tonight. All right. Uh, the president's argument tonight 
Innocent people were targeted for killing. Hospitals, ambulances were attacked, journalists arrested, sexually assaulted, killed, blah, 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 blah. Supplies, food, cut off, the, the water, you know, he goes on and on. Now, can we not make the case that we could go all over the world right now, Hugh? Yes, it's a terrible speech because you could not predict future American behavior based upon anything he said. You could be a friend or foe of the United States, read that speech over, and have no idea when the United States would act and when it wouldn't act, no idea when they would intervene. So in other words, there's plenty of places we could act right now based on his definition of, of what would constitute a reason to go into a country. Uh, chaos, absolute chaos. Well, and of course he said that you have to look at the situation and see how those humanitarian or that moral argument aligns with our interests, which as we've seen from Robert Gates' comments, Hillary Clinton's comments that, well, is it an interest? Is it not an interest? But the thing is that you look at what's happening in Syria. You, are we going to go there? You know, and then you look at what's happened in our past. As someone who just were, recently was in Rwanda, where that genocide was almost basically ignored and there was very nothing. little action there. Right. You know, I'm happy that we're going in and we're stopping the prevention of what could be a huge humanitarian crisis. But what they're ignoring is the fact that our allies it's an interest for them. It's an interest for France, for Italy, and for Great Britain. Let's, That's why we're there. If I could just make, if I could point a few facts out to you, armchair uh, generals, uh, who I, I'm going to use it Mr. again Beckel. and again. Well, I, I was in the, in the State Department, followed a little bit of this stuff, and here's the reality: we got a. And through the Security Council, a very tough resolution without a veto from some of our normal enemies. We put together a coalition and went into battle in the shortest period of time of the history of a coalition in the United States. Barack Obama did that. It's nine days old. Well, it okay, took us six great. months to get into Bosnia. Six months. Oh, you know, he well, took a shot why? at Clinton tonight, wasn't that uh, Well, he, and he should have. And he threw Bill Clinton under the bus. And he should have. And you tell me, did George Bush or anybody else ever get us into a humanitarian situation that short? Well, well, what about Iraq? Was not a human Humanitarian situation. Oh, wow. Humanitarian. So my offensive. foot. You're not going to stick up. We were, we, were going to go into, okay. we were going into Iraq to take care of the weapons of mass destruction that were in, uh, initiated by Dick Cheney's brain sometime in the middle the of the night. That was the only reason. Oh, oh was it? No. No, no, how about the, well, the no-fly zone that was being done was working was fine. Not. Nobody was dying in Iraq during the no-fly zone. I am so glad you invite me here on Monday nights because no one would believe Beckel. No one. I think they think I make this up. Bob, you have known a lot of speechwriters. Was that not the worst speech? Just as a technical matter, just as a brilliant. There was nothing to get your arms around. Quote something from it. Give me one. Quote. I, I think when he said we went in there for humanitarian reasons and in the long-term special interest of the United States, I think is exactly right. And he did it you with know, allies. This will be known as will be known as the North. Star speech because it's the only thing that was in there that was memorable and it has no idea what it means. Do you, no do you not think it's memorable that all those women and children and people were in the harm's way that were going to be like slaughtered? You're arguing for Bush in Iraq. It I does. Mean, no, it's hilarious. Nobody was like being me. challenged to be killed Excuse in Iraq. Me, people Who? were slaughtered in Iraq. No, wait, 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 that's why we had a no fly zone. Wait, 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 that's why we had a no fly zone. It was working. Wait a minute. The Kurds were slaughtered with Excuse chemical me, that's weapons. That's right. And that's why we put a no fly zone up and for three years nobody was slaughtered, which is why there'd be a no fly zone. But don't don't George worry about Bush went to Gaddafi the U.N. will George be gone. Bush built a broader coalition than Obama. Yeah, if you George want to, if you want to include Papua twice. New Guinea, yeah, the Papua New Guinea did the cooking. It was great. The, but the oh look, the, fa the fact of the matter is that there will be no Gaddafi in a month, and and we'll sit back here and How I will remind you, you of bet? that. Huh? How much? I'll, I'll be willing to bet you whatever you want to bet because he's going to do with no money and no military. You don't think you think his military is going to take I this just, kind I, of power? I don't have confidence in somebody running our forces uh, because the president you, you, doesn't have the courage to lead. Uh, what? The what? The president just said America's role is limited. We're only in on the front end. No ground troops. Transfer responsibility. If he transfers responsibility, that means he's out. Excuse me. There, there are two wars we're fighting over there now, and the United States, under the Supreme what? Allied he, Commander, he bowed out of his responsibility. Does he, Assad he have did, to worry tonight about did, slaughtering all of his people? If Bashir Assad starts to mow down people by the tens of thousands, yes, I would worry about it. Absolutely. About that? Not on the basis of this speech. Uh, because well, on the basis I, of this speech, I tell you, you Sarah Palin can go first. We, November 2012 cannot come soon enough. More than Sarah Palin. Did you say Sarah Palin in 2012 in the same breath? We continue now with our great American panel. This is one of these situations where I wish I was wrong. I, um, the media, as we were watching all of the protesters in Tahir Square in, in, in Egypt and Mubarak being called a dictator, even though as imperfect as he was, I kept asking, well, what's going to follow? And I looked at the public opinion polls. Public opinion polls showed that a, a vast majority of Egyptians supported apostates being killed and men and women not working together. And they had very extreme views about Islam being involved in politics. Now, the New York Times reports the Muslim Brotherhood 
uh, is at the forefront of this uh, partnership with the military government that is believed everything I predicted they're going to be the ones that come to power what are we better are they people of Egypt going to be better off it's really sad that something that where you saw a group of young people of students that were organized um, a, a, wanting a secular government was so strong at the beginning of this that was all that was covered and now you're seeing that they're not really in control anymore. It's the Muslim Brotherhood that is organized has come in. And, and you know, we don't know exactly what result we're going to see, but what we did see when they called for people to come and vote on that referendum of when they're going to have this election that gives the Muslim Brotherhood an advantage because they are more well organized than the secular parties, they appealed to their sense of religion. They said, if we have a secular nation, we're going to become like the West. We're going to have these ideals that they have. We don't want that. It's your religious duty to vote. Now, so, I mean, if, it's scary. I was like a pariah for even suggesting. Now, we've done one other bit of investigation, and we see that a lot of the Libyan rebels are connected to Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. Are we going to help Al-Qaeda mm -hmm. rebels defeat Gaddafi? Yeah, you know, Sean, it's not a surprise. You did broadcast it. It's been on uh, your show. It's been on our radio shows. There's a fellow named Lawrence Wright, liberal, New Yorker writer, wrote a book called The Looming Tower. Have you read it, Bob? Most important I've book. I've read it there. three times. The most important book. This is not a surprise. And this is how right. the Brotherhood works. This is how they and come out of Egypt. Al -Qaeda came it's from. written in the New York Times this and, morning. And, and as Times. a result, it should not surprise the Obama administration that they have empowered people who will be hostile to the United States, and they are doing it again in Libya, and they're going to do it again in Syria because they have no coherent grasp if I could, of who if, the enemy is in this instance. Even they the, don't understand could, the, the Clinton State Department recognized that the rebels in Libya have ties to al-Qaeda. And the Muslim Brotherhood was the birthplace of al-Qaeda. Uh, and uh, Mr. Huam, who came here to the United States, was the one who started all Really, Colorado, you bet. That's right. Got thrown out of there because he was too dark to get a haircut, if I remember right. But, uh, well, he went to the Baptist dance and got But in any event, uh, the idea that there will be anything but a secular government in Egypt is... Uh, Absolutely impossible because the military will not let it happen. Number one, number two. Yeah, but with this article the, the saying other, that wait, they've aligned with the military, the records of Jimmy Carter. If you all, if you, if you all had read the, read the referendum carefully, you would have seen that the treaty with Israel was kept intact by the Egyptian people that voted now, for but it. Wait a minute, but the and brotherhood, the, the, the brotherhood said prepare for war with Israel. The brotherhood has been saying that for a long time. Remember how the Carter brotherhood will never they have. They hadn't had a majority in government. The, the, they don't have a majority. They will not have a majority in government. Do you remember how Carter guaranteed Homeland? Khomeini would be okay for human rights. Oh, they compared him to, they compared I, I him to Gandhi. Yeah, they said Khomeini Gandhi. I don't remember. I was, I, I was, in, I was in the White House then. I don't remember ever hearing that statement made. You know, the Khomeini was going to be fine. Never. Yeah, I never heard that statement made. Maybe you know something I didn't know, but there was I was a Carter there administration and I right. official that said the point. The media, official who said it. That's simply the President of the United States saying, "Look, the Egyptians have been our allies. The military, most of them, have trained over here. The idea they're going to let the Muslim Brotherhood take over is as about as much of a chance as the Easter Bunny getting burned before oh, Easter." I believe. It ain't going to happen. Khomeini to Jefferson in your administration. It, listen, you so got. Why should you we got, trust the Democratic foreign policy elite that was so wrong about Iran in 1978 that we now have a new oh, I see, group of militants? Why see. should we trust the Democratic foreign policy elite to get anything? It's, it's that same foreign policy elite is picking up a couple of bad wars that the Republicans elite started, and we'll get that done. And but, one. Uh, at one what? Iraq. So yeah, one. Functioning okay. liberal democracy in Iraq, it is successful. We'll, we'll, and a U.S. We'll see. Let's give we'll, Kirsten we'll the last see. word tonight. I'm just going to say I think that we're ignoring the reality that they already are having an influence on the formation of the new government. Whether they have a majority or not, they are going to have a veritable influence. Gee, and I think well, that's, that's something surprising. we have to watch it's, out It's for. like the South would have influence on it, too. No, they're a part they, of the country. They, but they weren't allowed to before under Mubarak. Not saying that he was the greatest, that's but they right. weren't. They, they had to play put it down. Put them in a the cellar and take those rubber hoses and you get them in shape. I mean, you, you want to keep a, a, a torture in place? Fine. Go ahead and do it. The guy was a, right. was a torture, a murderer, and he's almost dead, and we're better off for it. And so is the Brotherhood. They're terrible. The Brotherhood's going to be fine. That's all the time we have left. Greta's next. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for being here.